Hello, and welcome to Expose Your Talent Online with MyArtistPortfolio.com. My name is Areed Esselin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress. So once you have your domain name and your hosting all set up, you can really start to get into the fun stuff of building a website, which is designing your website. In order to design your website, you need to go and grab a whole bunch of textbooks on programming language and HTML code. I'm kidding. You don't need to know any code to design your website. All you need is a system that will allow you to publish your content for your website. And there are many different systems that you can use. But Jewel and I personally love using WordPress. So, how do you get started? Well, I'll take you through the exact six steps for putting your WordPress site together in five minutes. So, the first step is to download WordPress. Pretty easy. The second step is to create a database and a database user on your server. The third step is to rename the wp-config sample.php file to wp-config.php. The fourth step is to edit the content within your wp-config.php file. Step number five is to upload all of the WordPress files onto your server using an FTP client. And the sixth and final step is to run the WordPress installation script so your site can be up and running on the internet. I promise you it's a lot simpler than it sounds. So, are you ready? Let's get started. I'll see you on the screen. Alright, so thanks for joining me here on the screen. The first step is to download WordPress. So open your internet browser. I already have mine opened here. And we're going to type in www.wordpress.org. Hit enter and you'll see an orange button that says download in the top right hand corner. Just click on that and you'll see another button that allows you to download the latest version of WordPress. So click on this button and download the zip file and save it to your computer. And I've already done that here. So I'm going to open up my downloads folder and you'll see the WordPress file that says right here with a bunch of books piled up to it together. What you'll need to do is unzip this file to extract all of the WordPress files within this. Right click, click on extract here. Once that's done, you'll see a WordPress folder that allows you to click on it and see all of the files within that. So you've completed your first step of downloading WordPress. Let's move on to the second step. Step number two is to create a database user and a database on your server. You'll need to log into your cPanel or your admin panel in order to do this. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm with Lunar Pages so I'm going to go to account.lunarpages.com but depending on your site it might be your domain name slash cPanel. It's all pretty similar though. What you'll need to do is go into your control panel and I'm going to scroll down here to, to go to LPCP button. Once you're in your cPanel you'll see a bunch of options that pop up here. Go to the databases section where you'll see the MySQL manager icon. Click on that and you'll see a page with a bunch of MySQL users. You see that I've already created some users and I've already created some databases here on this site. But we're going to go and do this together. So I'm going to create a new database and you can do that here where it says create new database. You can choose whatever name you'd like. I'm going to keep it simple and type in WP for WordPress. Click on create and it'll tell you that the database was just created successfully. So let's go back to the manager and now we're going to create a user. So you'll see that here, create new MySQL user. I'm going to pick a username and again to keep it simple I'm going to type in WP admin. You're going to be asked to choose a password so I'm going to choose admin as well. Re-enter your password and hit create and you'll see that your user was created successfully. So click on back 
because before we leave step number two, we're going to have to assign the user that you just created to the database that you just created. So let's scroll down to the page here where it says grant access for my SQL user. Select your database name that you just created along with the database user. And you can leave the privileges set to all. Hit grant. And you'll see here that the user was granted access successfully to the, to the database that you just created. Basically what you've done in this step is you've created a folder on your server to allow all of the WordPress files to be put under. So you can see your website up on the internet. Let's move on to the third step. The third step is to rename the wp-config-sample.php file to wp-config.php. That probably sounds like a lot of jargon right now, but it's really simple, I promise. So go to the folder that you extracted all of your WordPress files to. And I have that all set up here already. And you're going to see a bunch of WP files here. Go to wp-config-sample and right click on it to rename the file. You're going to want to delete the dash sample at the end there and hit enter once that's done. There, that was easy. Step four is to edit the wp-config file. So let's open this up by right clicking. Make sure you choose open with and we're going to make sure this opens up in Notepad. So select that program and click OK. Once you open the file, you'll see something that looks like this with a bunch of different writing here. What we're going to do is replace these three fields here where it says database name here, username here, password here, and uh, oh there's a fourth location that we're also going to change. That's the local host right here. So let's do just that. The database name you know from what you created in step four. So let's go back to our internet browser and copy that information. So I see here the database name we created. I'm going to select that, right click, click on copy, and go back to the notepad. Select the text that says database name here. Make sure to leave the quotation marks around it right click and paste that right in there. I'm going to do the same for the username. So I'm selecting that, right clicking, copy, and doing the same right here. The password I created for the database is the one that you entered in when you created the user. So I'm going to enter that in as admin. And the database host is also available on your control panel or your admin panel. So in this case, it's on the side here for me where it says DB server. And I'm going to copy this set of numbers right here by selecting them and again right clicking copy. Going back to the notepad, selecting local host being sure to leave the quotation marks around that and pasting that right in there. So that's all you need to do once you've changed those four fields. Make sure you save the file and now you can close that out. Now we're on to our fifth step which is uploading all of your WordPress files onto your server using an FTP client. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol and refers and an FTP client refers to a program that allows you to transfer any files from your computer up onto the server so that they show on your website. So first we'll need to download an FTP client software and the one that I use and I really like is called FileZilla. To download FileZilla let's open up a new uh, browser here and I'm going to type in the web address FileZilla-project.org slash download.php. 
Once you've hit enter, it'll take you directly to the FileZilla download page here, and you're going to select the appropriate file to download. Once you click on that, make sure you follow the instructions to first download FileZilla and then install it on your computer. Once you've installed your FTP client, we're going to open that up, and I have that already on my desktop ready to go. And it'll look something like this here. Before we can start uploading the files from your computer to the server, you first need to establish a connection with your server. And it's quite easy to do that. All you have to do is go to File, Site Manager, click on New Site, and enter in the domain name of your website. Hit Enter. And we're going to fill out the information here. So your host and then you can leave protocol FTP set as that. Also the encryption is fine as well. For the logon type, make sure you select normal and you're going to assign a username and password as well. This is just to be sure that your FTP client always asks for a password before transferring files up onto your server, onto your website. Once you've set your username and password, click on connect. You'll see a bunch of commands and responses until finally you should see a status that says directory listing successful, which means you've successfully connected onto your server. Everything that you see on the left hand side of your screen consists of files on your computer. And everything you see to the right hand side of the screen consists of files that are up on your server. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload all of the WordPress files onto your server. So on the server side, make sure you open up the folder and click on public HTML because that's where you're going to upload all of the WordPress files. On the left side here, make sure you find your WordPress folder that you unzipped. In this case, it's already selected for me here. And in order to select all of the files, just click on any one of the files and on your keyboard hold down the control button and press the A button which will select all of the files for you. Next right click and then hit upload. This just popped up for me here because I've already uploaded the files so I'm going to click on always overwrite but in this case for you because you haven't done this before you won't see this window pop up so you don't have to worry about this. And now your FTP client is going to be transferring all of the WordPress files from your computer onto your server. This is going to take a few minutes so you can go grab a coffee or something. Alright, welcome back. So you would have seen your file transfer protocol client move everything over successfully. Once that's finished, you can finally move on to the sixth step and that's to run the WordPress installation script. So let's minimize this and go to our internet browser, open up a new tab, and enter in your website name slash wp-admin slash install dot php. And if everything transferred over correctly and you followed all six of these steps exactly as I've outlined here, you're going to see a page that welcomes you to the installation process. All you need to do is just fill out the information on the form here. So I'm just going to quickly do that. The site title, the username, your password, and make sure you put in a functional email. I'm going to use the Esatino Connections email here. Make sure the box over here is checked. This will allow your website to appear in search engines like Google and Technorati. And then click on the install WordPress button. And congratulations, you've just successfully installed WordPress. The last thing you need to do is just make sure that your username and password are successfully entered into the system and make sure you can log in to your WordPress account. So click on the login button and it's going to ask you for your username and password. Hit login and if everything's successful you're going to see yourself turn up on the dashboard or the back end of your website. So that's how you install WordPress. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.